Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this live session on Detox for Educators. Myself, Joya Khan, Ambassador of Change from Getty, and your host for this live session. Holding the beckon of success, I bring greetings from the entire Getty fraternity. And as we are showing winds of change on this live forum for the educators and all the renowned speakers from all around the globe, I feel privileged to welcome our esteemed speaker this morning. He is Mr. Uh, Mr. Anand Kumar Shemrudkar. He has given us time to be with us and share his views. He is here. He has done his uh, certification in Canada, course graduate. He is a qualified education agent counselor. He is a certified nutrition and wellness advisor. He is also a global career counselor. And Mr. Anand has been involved in the education and career counseling sphere since 1998. And he has coached students from 9 to MBA. His forte is in career counseling and coaching for languages, mathematics, accountancy, taxation, financial management, economics, business studies, management studies. His current ventures are in the field of corporate training and career guidance. Sir has been kind enough to grace the occasion by his presence. And his and Sir's topic for the day is future careers and skills. So this is a very relevant topic in which I think our youths need a clear cut guidance and counseling from time to time. So uh, without wasting much time, I hand over the session to sir. Over to you, sir. A very warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joanna. And uh, very warm welcome to all of you. Welcome to this wonderful session. So I believe uh, we have got uh, all the young people in the crowd listening today. Am I right? Okay. So I guess uh, this topic is relevant to young and old all alike. Uh, so to begin with, I'd just like to say career and future careers is quite a vast field. Today what I am going to cover is just the essential part of it, mainly that which is related to the technological aspect. Careers are everywhere. Every field is full of opportunity. But today we are specifically going to focus on those careers which are going to be the dominating careers in the next century. This century as well as the coming century. So without further ado, let us begin. So as you can see, I have this my welcome screen. Uh, let me just again reintroduce myself. I am Anand Shandrutkar. I am a management graduate. And as Joanne Madam kindly pointed out, I have got certain qualifications by virtue of which I am in front of you today. I belong to the ESPI group, one of the major consulting groups in India and worldwide, having offices in India as well as in countries like UK and Canada. And uh, ESPI has been in this field for the last uh, 15 to 20 years almost now, we will be celebrating our uh, next year as the 20th year, 20th uh, year in the business as usual. So I'm fortunate to be working with these people and I'm uh, quite grateful to the CEO of my company, Mr. Sandeep Patel, for allowing me this opportunity to work with this company. So let us begin. So as you can see the welcome screen, uh, this I have selected specifically to show you something. You can see a young dynamic person working in the office of the future. So this is what the future offices are going to be like. Okay, walls are not walls, but they are your interactive mediums and we are constantly processing data. So this is a data centric office and the person is a data scientist, a data engineer, or a robotics engineer, and these are the fields we'll be talking about today. So most of the young people, they are quite tech savvy, and they also want to get into the aspect of technology, build their careers. So I'll give some highlight 
into what they can expect in the future. So let me begin. I hope I am clear, audible and the video audio both are clear, right? Somebody give me a thumbs up or you can tell me if everything is all right. Jai ma'am, everything going fine so far? Okay, so Price Waterhouse Cooper. So this is the world-renowned agency in financial analytics and consulting. So it has brought out four alternative worlds of work. Okay, named after different colors. And this is how the future is going to look like. So the first world is the red world. And the red world is characterized by technology. Technology is all pervasive, dominating, and the world, red world will be driven by technology. And what will this do is, this will allow tiny businesses, businesses which are run from the desktop, just an, or the office is as big as a table, okay? And they would be able to tap into the vast reservoirs of markets and companies all over the world. We are already seeing a transition into the human resource management that the traditional company-based management is now changed into consulting system. So most of the companies now, they hire HR consultants rather than have their own department for HR. So it's totally outsourced. And uh, the competition is fierce as we already are facing today. So even at my age, I have to keep updated and see to it that I continuously acquire talent, skills, and certifications, which will make me relevant in today's world. Now, this is going to be the story for everybody in the coming age, anybody who wants to be in the sphere of economics and earn income from one source or the other source. So that is the red world for you. The blue world. Uh, global corporations will become larger. You can already see big corporations. They are becoming not only multinational, they are becoming truly global in the sense. Uh, they don't have only offices in the capital cities of countries, but they have offices all over different countries. So you can see corporations like Google and Apple and Microsoft having offices everywhere. Facebook is having offices everywhere in the world. They have data centers spread across all the world. So that is the blue world. So global corporations will become larger, powerful, and more influential than ever. Companies see their size and influence as the best way to protect their profit margins. And this is true because if they don't grow, if they stop growing, they'll be wiped out of the market. So these people, they are constantly innovating, bringing newer things, so that they can keep their dominance in the business place. And you will see a world where business corporates and politics, they'll be so intertwined that you cannot separate one from the other. The green world. So as a reaction to strong public opinion, scarce natural resources and strict international regulations, companies will push a strong ethical and ecological agenda. So we all know that uh, the earth as such is facing crisis in the form of human exploitation. We have exploited the resources so haphazardly that we are now disturbing the whole ecological balance. So because of this concern among us, the normal population of the world, corporations are forced to think green. They will bring out processes which are ecological, which don't harm the environment, and which use as little resources or renewable resources as possible. So you are going to see a big push or a big thirst of technology in this area, which is going to save the earth from more harm. So that is the green world for you. Now we have the yellow world. So yellow world is dominated by the workers. So why workers will dominate because now we are coming to an age where technology will be used most often. But who will be the people who will work with the technology or who will make this technology? They are the people, they are the workers. So 
all the shop floors, all the factories, they will be atomized, but they cannot totally negate the influence of human factor. So somebody will be there who has to look after those machines too. Okay, so here the workers will then have a great command over the management and management will have to work in tandem with worker, workers and will find a future where workers are not working as employees, but you'll find them working as partners. So most of the big corporations, they are now giving employee stock options and all. So these people, those who are working in these corporations, they are not only the employees, but they are also the part owner. They are the shareholders of those companies. So this trend is already set in and this trend will dominate in the future too. So this gives you an idea about how the future world of jobs, business and profession is going to be. Okay, so what are the changes that are coming our way? So already we are living in a tumultuous time. Everything is changing. Things are so much dynamic. You cannot just be at one place. Oh, I have landed up with this job. Now I am free from all tension. That's not going to work. The government sector is not going to be a government sector forever. Governments all over the world, they are leaving their governance or the economic sphere and they are purely concentrating on the governing sphere. Okay, so government will be moving out of many of the services and they will be outsourcing or they will be privatizing these services. Okay, so these are the changes that are coming our way. So there will be technological breakthroughs and rapid advances in technological innovation. As I've already discussed, the red world, global shifts in the location of work and economic activity. So now see, I am today here and giving a presentation to you. So I am in, at a remote location, you are at different places, but we are still connected. That is because location now does not matter with the advent of technology. Okay, changing work worker preferences. Now, most of the people post pandemic, you know that they are so used to working from home that they hate going to offices. And now companies are looking into this aspect where they can make offices in homes so that employees can work more. Actually working from home, you have to put in double the efforts than you have to put in at the offices. That, that's the truth. And though it is a hard task, People have come to pay for that. So you will see that the preferences of the workers are going to change like anything. Resource scarcity and climate change, we already discussed, and this is our major concern, and technology will be coming into play over here, which will help us save the scarce resources or find out alternative means of resources and tackle climate change. Demographic shifts, say now the world is truly becoming globalized. So many Indians are now going abroad to study. They are settling over there. So it is India going everywhere. So if you go to UK, you'll find a lot of people from India who have made UK their home. They are citizens over there. You will see that uh, many a large part of Canada is now also occupied by the Indian population. You will see the same thing in US. You will see that in Australia, New Zealand, so you see that culture has spread all over the world. So that this is known as demographic shifts. Again, the demographic shifts can also be seen in the age and the working. So the jobs which earlier were done by those who are quite in a mature age, like my age, they are now being taken over by younger people, people who are just freshly out of colleges. Why? Because they have had that education which can replace the experience. Are you getting my point? So you will see large scale demographic shifts everywhere. Okay. There are opportunities to grab. So whenever we face challenges, challenges always come with solutions. There is nothing about challenges. Challenges or opportunities are always hidden as problems. So whenever you have a problem, always see that it's just the face of an opportunity. It's not a problem, it's an opportunity. So what are the opportunities of the future? Human abilities are amplified as focus is on decision making and creative thinking. Yes. So unless we develop this creative thinking, the future is bleak for us. We will be relegated to jobs where we won't be happy. So creative thinking is must. 
and along with creative thinking comes the ability to make decisions quick decisions on spot decisions critical decisions okay then wider talent pool and location base to manage cost business and continuity and efficiency so now companies are also going to have a lot of options because people are ready to work from remotest of the location so they have wider choices okay so that is also an opportunity for us why because sitting in here in a remote location like vadodara i have been able to land up a job in usa because the us companies want something to be done in my region so will look out for me but at the same time somebody from the us won't be able to do that job because i am ready to take up that job so the company will have a choice of wider talent pool across locations in the globe so redefining ways of working and flexibility of where and how employees choose to work as already discussed now companies are looking at ways where they can make employee comfortable and extract maximum work from them okay so uh, there will be a lot of shift in the office spaces and now offices are coming on to the virtual space so i have uh, many of my colleagues and friends they are working from their homes and uh, when they come online you feel as if they are working from an office so they have the virtual backgrounds and everything and with the advent of virtual reality vr this is going to enhance in the future work and performance are assessed against how efficiently workers manage their resources so whenever we get a job in some company so we get salary from there we will get something from there but for the company we are a cost center because the company has to pay us so if i am using the company's air condition company's cabin the electricity the rent of the premises my salary all of this is added up as cost now against this if i don't do enough production then my job is redundant company will see to it that that cost center is closed so that the cost can be converted into profits okay so when when if you are monitored or not monitored if there is somebody to supervise you or not supervise you you always have to see to it that you positively contribute to the company's profit margin otherwise that cost center will be closed so if the cost center is shut down the job is gone so work and performance are assessed against how efficiently we manage our resources so the cabin the air condition and everything these are the resources that the company provides us okay and uh, the last is productivity enhancement okay like i told you before nobody can just sit idle okay i have done with my education i don't need anything more so they have to continuously evolve innovate and acquire newer and newer talents to be relevant in the marketplace challenges or fears that we'll have to overcome so the biggest fear is artificial intelligence and robotics so most of the people are predicting a green future that now robots will take over everything human beings will not have job so now we have atms so earlier instead of atms there were people you had to go to the bank and people would there will be a teller the people was uh, the person who was giving money that person is known as a teller the teller will give you money against a slip or against uh, a check okay now the teller's job is replaced by what the automatic teller machine atm so replacing human task as we move into the future many of the mundane tasks the repetitive tasks will be replaced by machines so that is the biggest fear we have to tackle so but like i said now there are people there are companies who manufacture the atm machines okay there there are people who look after the maintenance of atm machines so one thing results into many different things so if the teller has lost the job then the teller should be smart enough to go into different fields learn and acquire skills so that he or she can venture into different fields so to overcome this challenge we have only one way to do survive and that is continuously acquire skills 
skills that are relevant. Shifts will result in unemployment and migration will continue to be rampant. So as I already told you, see people moving out of their country and going to countries where they need people. So this will be rampant and this will continue and the rate of this will be so high that uh, countries will lose the sense of boundaries. It will be just like crossing. Okay, you are going from one city to another city. Same way people will move from one country to another country. Okay, we are already seeing the effects of that now. Flexibility at the cost of productivity and unfairness when only certain jobs can be done remotely. Right? So this we have already uh, discussed about the cost center and productivity. Unfairness when only certain jobs can be done remotely. So see, farming cannot be done remotely. But we will come to that future when even the farm technology is robotics driven. So you would be able to operate it remotely too. But still the, there are certain jobs which you cannot do remotely. You have to be at that place to do the job. So those jobs will still stay for at least the next 100 years. Then we might have te technology where robotics and artificial intelligence may even do that job. But there will always be need of humans to oversee the entire production chain, whether it is artificial intelligence driven or robotics driven. Employees may resort to maximizing their income at the cost of contributing to the society. So we are talking about the fear of a selfish society, where everybody is just concerned about their own well-being and not thinking about contributing back to the society. So today, my coming onto this platform is contributing back to the society. I want some knowledge to be shared with you people where you need this knowledge. Okay, So this will keep on reducing. That is a fear. That is simply a fear. Uh, if you see from my perspective, I don't think uh, this will be the case because now you see more and more people who are doing a lot for the society. Okay. So this I have already discussed that to be relevant in the marketplace, you will have to continuously acquire skills. Without skills that are needed, we don't have any place in any corporation or any business. Okay. So tech careers of the future. Okay. So first is machine learning engineer. So this is a specific branch of artificial intelligence and ideal for those who have passion for computer science and desire a career in a fast moving and exciting industry. So how will the machine learn? So there are certain pro programs and codings to be done so that the machine learns from repetitive processes. So facial recognition, that is artificial intelligence technology. Fingerprint recognition, that is again artificial intelligence technology. So this, this technologies work on computer coding. So those who are, who love coding, the future is bright for them. Okay. Machine learning engineers use big data to create complex algorithms and to ultimately program a machine in order to perform and carry out tasks like human. So many people are thinking about Android. When you think about artificial intelligence, people see Androids. Android means humanoids the human like robots but that's still a lot of time in the future that technology is already being developed but we, we have more of robots doing it so robots don't look like humans okay so when we say robots people immediately assume that some machine that is looking like human but we are not talking about humanoids right but there will be programming done so that the machine learns on its own. Okay. So what are the degrees you will need? So you will need a computer science master's to be able to go into the field of artificial intelligence. Okay, robotics, the future. So when we talk about robotics, what are we talking about? So the use of robotics will increase productivity and has the potential to bring manufacturing production work back to developed countries. As productivity increases, labor is likely to receive a significant share of benefits. 
robot adoption will likely be a critical determinant of productivity growth and has the potential to reshape global supply chains. Improvements in automation technology as robotics are poised to bring more automated manufacturing. So you can already see a lot of robotics being used in the sectors of agriculture, the sectors of mining, and uh, the sectors of automobile production, a lot of other spheres. Even in uh, sectors where they manufacture the computers and computer peripherals, microchips and everything, most of the technologies are now robot driven. Okay, so we have discussed enough about robotics. I get uh, you people now have a fair idea of what is the meaning of robotics. Remember, it is not a machine looking like a human. Okay, these are machines, these are automated machines which keep on working without any human intervention, without the need of human supervision. Okay, so which are the fields in which robotics are used? Drone deliveries mechanical welding arms, self-driving cars, autonomous machines, artificial intelligence-based processes. Okay. Now, robotics and engineer, another field which is a future career field. Okay. As technology continues to evolve, okay, more and more people will be needed who can not only program a computer, but program a robot. So robotics engineering has both the parts of programming as well as the parts of technical designing. Okay, how to design that machine so that it works smoothly without breakdowns. So that whole scope will be the scope of robotics engineer. Okay, over the next few years, it's likely that we'll see a number of new and innovative ways in which modern technologies help societies and businesses function, particularly in healthcare. So we might not be knowing this, but a lot of hospitals have a lot of automated equipments nowadays. Okay, If you go to their autocar section, everything is automated. If you see that uh, life support systems, these are automated machines. They work on their own. Okay, So we, uh, we see it, but we don't realize. So if you look at it closely, there's a lot of opportunity over there. So what degrees you will need? you need a master's in robotics or computer science. Okay, so that is just a degree, that is just a stepping stone. Then there's a lot to do to move ahead in that industry. User experience, UX designers. So what we are doing now, I'm sharing my slide screen, this platform of live streaming that you are seeing right now, all this is part of the user experience. So I am here at a remote location talking to you but it should feel as if we are just talking, uh, talking, sitting across the desk. Okay, so how to bring that experience in an impersonal medium? That that forte is the forte of user experience. So you will need designers to design such systems. Okay, user experience designers. So behind the scenes design of ensuring software, website, or apps meet the consumer's habits, motivations behaviors and needs. So what degrees you will need for that? Again, a degree in computer science. Okay. So when we say of computer science, it is not only BCA and MCA. These are application fields. There are pure degrees in computer science too. So you'll have to acquire knowledge from those degrees and use it as a stepping stone to further yourself in this technological field. Data scientist, as I showed you the first picture, that is a picture of a data scientist. Okay, so it is dubbed as the sexiest job of 21st century. Why? Because data scientists are paid the most handsomely. And why are they paid most handsomely? Because they make sense of this critical world. The world is dynamic, changing. So to make sense of this world, we need data and we need interpretation. So how to gather the data, how to interpret it? Okay, that is the job of a what? A data scientist. And most of the data now that is generated is generated through our mobile phones, our interaction with systems and platforms like Facebook, Instagram. So from there, they generate a lot of data. But to make sense of that data, this data, you need the qualifications of a data scientist. As businesses and organizations collect and use modern data every day, 
the demand for skill experts has skyrocketed. Opportunities to work in particularly every sector and industry from IT to entertainment, manufacturing to healthcare. So the scope is unlimited for data scientists. What degree do you need for that? Relevant post graduation in computational and applied mathematics, data science, or e science. So, this will be your stepping stone to the world of data science. Cloud engineer. Can you name the company which is the leader in cloud processes and cloud based systems? Say so the first name that comes to us is Google, but Google is not the leader. Google is just having 2 to 4 percent share of the cloud market. The majority share is with Amazon. So it will be surprising, right? How come Amazon, Amazon, the seller, online seller, Amazon, it has a major share of cloud platforms? Yes, because Amazon ventured into this field when nobody was ready to venture into it. And Jeff Bezos kept it a hidden secret that they are into cloud platforms and uh, cloud computing. Only when its uh, balance sheet and financials came out did the world come to know that they are earning such a huge chunk out of cloud computing. Okay, so cloud engineers, again a field related to software is a big game changer in the coming future. So what degrees do you need? Again, a master of science in computer science. So that will be your stepping stone to go into the field of cloud engineering. So now, see, our country is not bad for education, not at all bad. But our education system is still having certain aspects of regressiveness where uh, there is always some resistance into the field in which uh, we want to go. There is no freedom. So this, because of this reason mainly, uh, students, they want to go and study abroad. So what are some of the reasons why students choose to go and study abroad? The first is a practical orientation. No college will run a course which is not relevant in the marketplace. As soon as the course is becomes irrelevant, they stop the course. They start with a new course which is needed in the industry. So the orientation is totally practical. And because of that, there are lots of employment opportunities. Okay, development of new perspectives. So there development team is always looking out for areas where they can bring out qualified certifications and degrees. Okay, so that the students hireability, employability in the market that increases. Ease of admissions, again, they don't have an entrance test or anything like that. Only few of the top notch universities, they might be profiling you and grading you as per your profile, but they don't have these entrance tests and all that. So ease of admission, quality education, because uh, abroad, the universities, they spend a lot on their facilities. So the education quality is top notch and you get a lot of options of courses and you also become independent because their study system is that they allow you to learn at your own pace and as per your own choice. Okay, again, studying abroad is quite an amazing experience because you are exposed to a new culture and you getting to absorb all that new culture. The standard of living is great. Okay, you get exposed to the global culture. Okay, so these are some comparisons. So minimum wage in India, we don't have minimum wage. Okay, admission criteria, extremely competitive. Practicality of education, there's a rat race. Everybody wants to go to IIT, everybody wants to become a doctor or an engineer, what about other fields? In abroad, average earning is from 1 to 3 lakh per month, even if you are a student. Okay, easy and practical admission, innovation and creativity is rewarded when you are studies. Okay, now coming back to my company, ESPI. So, we are a global company and we have been in business since last 15 years. Now, as I mentioned, that next year we'll be celebrating our 20th anniversary. So more than 3,000, now this number has crossed uh, 10,000. Okay, have successfully uh, qualified for IITs and all, and gone abroad. Okay, huge number of students who have successfully settled abroad. 
So these are some of our affiliations, the global affiliations with which we have worked, international organizations like British Council, IDP, IETA, IGS, ICEF. Okay, so why should anybody choose us? So everybody will claim that, okay, we give personalized services, but we don't give personalized services, we give customized solution as per your needs. We research for scholarships. We have continuous focus on innovation and technology. We were one of the few companies who brought out our own learning management system, the study portal or the education portal where students can join and study online. Okay, up to date with latest laws and regulation. Everything in our company is regulated. We don't do anything outside the purview of the law. We are working with many universities now, more than 100 universities across the globe. And uh, as you can see in the pictures, many of the university representatives, they regularly visit our offices and interact with the students. And many of the students also get direct admission through those university representatives. Okay, so this is the step to your journey abroad if you want to go. The first is you need a passport. After that, you have to become eligible with the language proficiency tests. Then you have to identify the country and university where you would like to go. You have to make some priority list. And once you get the admission through our counselors, the next step will be filing for your visa, arranging for your finances and airfare and all. And then going to your dream destination where again we'll help you with your post landing orientation your stay over there so we have a team of people who will take care of you even when you land in the destination of your dream so these are some of the pictures of our uh, head office our campus at Vadodara. so we have a huge campus and high-tech campus Okay, these are some of our offices in other cities. This is our office in Anand. This is our office in Karuch. And this is our office in Shahada. Okay, so if you want to contact us, you can note down the contact number or our email. And you can mail us or you can call us. And if you have any query or if you have any dreams, if you need counseling of what to do future, we are there to help. So with this, I end my presentation and now I'm open for the question and answer session. And I request Joya Ma'am to please take back the stage. Thank you so very much, sir, for that very meaningful and uh, uh, interesting presentation. Oh, interesting presentation for the youth in our countries today. And uh, I hope our young generation has been very alert and attentive to each and everything that you have uh, spoken. And uh, we can't deny the role of educators in the present times. We know that education for sustainable development is defined as education that encourages changes in knowledge, skills, values, attitudes to enable a more sustainable and just society for all. And you have really very clearly emphasized upon all the meaningful points and very clearly told the learners at present a young generation who are there in the process of building up their careers, the challenges that uh, come their way and how to tackle them, the opportunities that they can grab, right? And changes that are coming our way everywhere and in a big way. The transformation is immense thanks to technology, thanks to the, uh, you know, the beautiful way that things are emerging and changes are taking place every possible day 
then four possible worlds of work that you have focused upon the red world and the yellow world you have also told about robotics and the future what is robotics what are the various options that children have data like data scientist the ux designer the cloud engineer why one should study abroad the difference in the education system in india and abroad and why the advantages as to why people should opt for that so i think the picture is absolutely clear and a very very bright future is there knocking at the door of the youngsters and the only question is that are the youth listening are they ready to grab the opportunities as you put forward are they ready to meet the challenges and uh, you know just move on ahead take risks because as they say there is no pain without no gain without any pain so are they ready to make and walk that extra mile and are we as educators ready to guide them so this is a question that i would like to put forward to you what do you see the role of educators as in the future careers and skills that we just spoke and discussed about so educators have a wide role in that without educators uh, none of the students would be able to put their finger on what career they would be choosing so i think the role of educator in the current era mainly depends upon how they can open the minds of the students rather than uh, uh, drawing a line for them to walk on so it is all about opening up the spheres in their minds so i have been into teaching and i have seen that when i open the spheres of the students when i discuss things which are not in the textbook the students enjoy their learning and this is what opens their vistas to the worlds which they have never even dreamt of so it's all about opening the mind and educators job will be to be in touch with the latest happenings and also what is coming in the future so educator will have to do a lot of work to see that where they can guide the careers of the students what do you think uh, is the role of the parents in this present scenario sir so as in the present the, uh, the future of their children is concerned what do you think is the role of the parents so again like teachers parents will also have to be open minded and they will have to see that they don't force their children into careers which are not according to their aptitudes or their liking okay so the parents will have in a way help the students identify their ikigai because in the future we will need this connect with our work our work if we don't find the connect there will be cases of uh, mental instabilities and psychological disorders so parents have to be totally open minded and uh, they have to pressurize a bit but just a bit not more in seeing to that they maintain a discipline in their studies but also allow them to explore other areas so if they just put them into a particular mold that won't work for them in the future they have to let them expand they have to let them explore otherwise uh, they are at a risk of making their own children redundant in the future society uh thank you so very much sir uh the gist that i got from you was that a, a parent uh, has a very important role from the point of view that one should not force upon the child let the child sure. feel free to choose the uh, because there are so many career options and let the child free uh, feel free to choose which direction does he want to change you know, why does he want to take rather than having you know Uh, lofty expectations from a child and you know trying to impose your will upon the child like if okay. i am from a science stream like wanting my child to go into that very stream focusing upon just that stream is not i think justified because every child is born with a different mindset with a different approach to learning and you never know in which direction the child shines more so it is us as parents and educators to truly you know identify the skills at a very early age be very ardent and keen observers 
to our child's activities. I think you'll agree with me, sir, to understand Absolutely. which bend is the child actually having, bend of mind. And then once we are able to trace and track that, I think we as uh, educators and as parents, we will be able to guide them in the right direction and lead the child to the final goal that he or she is aiming at. So uh, that was, uh, that was uh, what I think we all took from this. A very, very uh, uh, keen insight we got into that uh, uh, very relevant topic of the day. And I thank my dear audience for being there and all the other people who will be eventually seeing the session. And I'm sure you will have some great insights into future career and skills and which is definitely going to benefit each one of us in some way or the other in the long run. So thank you so much for being with us, sir. Have a nice day. I thank my dear audience. Have a wonderful day and stay blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye.